All right. Uh, welcome to today's uh, webinar. Uh, we're going to be going over .NET Nuke Professional Edition, uh, kind of introducing you to the company and uh, the professional edition of .NET Nuke. And so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Will Stroll. I'm going to be doing the presentation today. I'm uh, one of the sales engineers here at .NET Nuke Corporation, and uh, I have uh, extensive experience with the platform. I've been using it for about seven or eight years uh, with, in many different capacities. So first things first, I want to make sure that everybody can hear me. Uh, so if you can hear my voice, uh, please use the GoToWebinar software, the control panel, to raise your hand. Excellent. Thank you very much. And if you can see my slide, if you can see that little tree in the center of my screen, uh, please go ahead and raise your hand one more time for me. Excellent. Looks like we're working out very well here. All right. Uh, so the first thing I want to mention is questions. I'm certain you'll have questions throughout the duration of this webinar. Uh, we will be using the, uh, the, the GoToMeeting or the GoToWebinar control panel to uh, receive and answer your questions. And so go ahead at any given point when you do have a question, please use that you know, question panel to uh, go ahead and ask your question. Don't hold it off. Uh, go ahead and ask it immediately so that way we can get to it at the end of the webinar. And uh, at the end of the webinar, we'll go ahead and um, respond to as many of these questions as possible. And uh, for any questions that we cannot get to, we'll go ahead and respond to those via email. Uh, so we're going to be talking about uh, .NET Nuke. Uh, first of all, the, the web. Uh, you know, if we look back to the year 2000, uh, most websites were very static. There wasn't, very, there wasn't uh, very many sites that had anything dynamic going on. They're very brochure-centric, very informational. Uh, and uh, so it was very difficult, if you look back at 2000, to kind of see where we would be by the time we get to 2010. You know, it would be kind of easy to predict e-commerce, but social mobile, uh, those are things where in 2000 it would probably be very difficult for you to, to uh, uh, you know, decide that that was going to be the future, that that was going to be there in 2010 and be uh, kind of the spearhead that you have to be going after. And, and so you know, what we, what we want to do is also look beyond that. So it's, it's very difficult for you as a business to look you know, 10 years ahead. Uh, so, you know, what is 2020 going to look like? You know, we had that many-to-many -many relationship in 2010, but what's 2020 going to look like? And that's where .NET New comes in. Uh, you know, we make it very easy for people to adapt to change. Uh, we, we afford you the tools and uh, the capabilities for you to adapt your business to the, the growing and changing web. Uh, so, you know, you as an organization, you experience a lot of pressure uh, it's coming from all directions, whether we're talking about your growth, uh, the, the speed of growth, or the speed of uh, how, you, how you're having to handle things, uh, you know, managing your, your website and, and your organization against competition, the growing cost of doing so, and, and these things are becoming very complex, especially when you're talking about the content explosion that's happened. We mentioned social and mobile. Uh, and, and in those areas, you know, there has become a content explosion. You've got content coming from and going to all kinds of places, your Twitters, your Facebooks, you know, all of these different uh, areas. And so what we do is we, we help you as a business respond to that fast and unpredictable change. You know, we, we try to take the struggling out of that. We try to help you here. And we do that because we have the world's leading uh, adaptive web platform. Uh, you know, we make it very easy for you to just click on things and make configuration changes and adapt to these business changes. And so that allows you to have a very quick and affordable response to these different things that change over time. Uh, a couple highlights about us. You know, we are the world's number one web content management system on the Microsoft stack. Uh, and that's evident of many different things. Uh, you can see that we have uh, over 1,700 commercial customers to date. Um, we have uh, some, some nice awards, including the Inc. 500. Uh, we were awarded uh, uh, number 23 overall in the software category, number 9 in the Bay Area. So that's pretty impressive if you think about who's in the San Francisco Bay Area. As far as kind of our footprint, uh, we do have uh, pretty much the world's uh, only uh, um, application marketplace for a content management system. There's over 10,000 applications there. And so if you need to do something in .NET Nuke, chances are somebody else already built it. And so you don't have to necessarily build out features that you need. You can just go purchase them, or some of them are even free. Uh, there are over 700,000 websites in the world that are running off of .NET Nuke, and those are just the ones we know about, and that's growing every day. 
over the course of the project, how you know it's been alive for almost 10 years now. Uh, you know, we've had over 7 million downloads, so that's pretty impressive. There's a lot of interest in using .NET Nuke for a variety of uh, different types of websites. And we have a community of over a million people. We have a million people that use this product on a daily basis, and, and that's worldwide. Uh, so there's a lot of people that use and depend on .NET Nuke on a daily basis. And so us as a company, we, we like to make .NET Nuke the hub of of uh, you know your more, most important business asset. Your website is that important business asset. Whenever anybody looks for anything on on the web or they think about your company, the first thing they do is they do a search. They find you. They find your website. They see it, and that's where you generate your leads. You make your income from from e-commerce. You, you do a lot of things that end up you know, providing that hub for your business. Uh, so uh, just a short note about our customers. Uh, there's quite a few customers, obviously. We mentioned the number. Uh, these are just some of the highlights here. And, and this is uh, really just to kind of illustrate to you that there are no specific verticals that .NET Nuke fits in. It's a very horizontal platform. There's uh, businesses uh, such as Sears. You know, so there's regular e-commerce uh, such as Sears and Pier 1 Imports. Uh, there's uh, governments such as the, the United States Army and all the armed forces, for that matter. Uh, there's other types of companies such as Coinstar, Comcast. So there's a lot of different types of organizations here, including uh, you know Harvard. So the educational system, cities, and in local governments, and all of our customers they come in all sizes. We have customers as small as five employees that use .NET Nuke as the backbone for their software as a service application, or customers as large as Time Warner Cable. They have over 47,000 people in their company, and they use .NET Nuke for the intranet. And so it is the hub for all their communication for their company. They rely on that. And so we're going to talk about the solutions that .NET Nuke brings to the table for you and your organization. The first one is it allows your end users to be able to create content with either little or no training at all. There's people out there that can uh, just pick up the ball and start rolling. They don't need to open up even a manual. They just start clicking and they figure things out very quickly, very easily. The other thing is that it allows your developers to very quickly build web applications. There's a very high ROI there. Uh, we have a case study, for example, where one organization, they said they saved the amount of time that it took for them to normally roll out a web project, they saved 600% of that time and effort uh, in building it using .NET Nuke. So it's pretty impressive. And so that speaks to the extensibility and horizontal platform that .NET Nuke runs off of. Now, just to uh, talk about what .NET Nuke is in terms of technology, uh, it does run off of the Microsoft stack. So for a production instance, you do require Windows Server 2003 or 2008. On there, you will uh, have Internet Information Server, or IAS, and it runs off of the .NET platform. So you're going to be using ASP.NET version 3.5 or newer. It will also run off of 4.0. So .NET Nuke sits on that entire stack and functions as a solution on that stack. So it is an ASP.NET application, and it does require an SQL Server back in. Uh, so that uh, SQL Server it can be uh, 2005 or 2008. Now for a non-production instance, you do not need Windows Server. So if you're doing testing or development or anything like that, you can run this off of other versions of Windows, uh, from Windows XP to Vista to Windows 7. And for that matter, uh, SQL Server does not need to be your back end. Uh, you'll find that the extensibility of .NET Nuke gets throughout the platform, and it does include the database uh, that you connect to. So it can be another database if you desire. Now, the solution that we're talking about, .NET Nuke, uh, the two solutions that we mentioned, uh, come in the form of the Web Content Management System and the Web Application Framework. The Web Content Management System, or the CMS, is the part that your end users will see. This is the part that your visitors will see, your end users will click on and edit content and things like that. Then we have the web application framework, and this is where your developers and your designers would live on a daily basis. This is where they go to build out solutions based upon .NET Nuke and based upon your business strategy. Now we're going to dive into web content management just briefly. Uh, so .NET Nuke on its own is what's known as a multi-tenant framework. What that means to you is that you can run as many different websites off of a single instance of .NET Nuke, and uh, there are no limits there. Every single website can have as many domain names as it wants to respond to, and you can have an unlimited number of websites. Now, the interesting thing is that every single website is going to pretty much be in its own sandbox. 
It's going to have its own content, its own uh, pages, its own users, its own security, and as I mentioned, its own domain name. And as, a, as you add new sites, they also will have all those things that are unique to them. But they all will, in a single instance or a single installation, they will all share something we call extensions. And all extensions are is just something you can install into the platform to uh, enhance functionality or add functionality to the system. And so I'm going to talk about a couple of those just briefly. Uh, the most common one is uh, it's called a module. And all a module is is the thing that you're going to be seeing on a daily basis on the different pages that you add to the site. Uh, so each of these modules could be an example like a blog or a forum or just HTML-based content, uh, surveys, things like that. Now, the three uh, center extensions there, and by the way, this, this is not all the types of extensions. These are just the most common. Uh, so the center ones are all about the design of your site. Skins, that's what we call a design in .NET New. Uh, so your skins, your skin objects, and your, uh, your widgets, uh, these are things that you use to change the design and apply your branding and uh, you know, make any type of, of visual adjustments to the layout of your site that you would like. And then finally, there's language packs. So .NET Nuke is a fully localized solution. It does allow you to, uh, to localize not just the static contents, but all of your dynamic content as well. So if you have the need to roll out a multilingual website, you can do that with uh, .NET Nuke. Now, no matter which feature we're talking about, .NET Nuke does apply this concept of no limits. Uh, we're very proud to be able to tell you that you can run as many websites as you want on there, use as many domain names as you want, have as many content editors, users, security roles, and so on as you would like. We do not build in any limitations to any of those things. Now, before we get to them, I just want to explain the concept of users just briefly. So I'm going to start uh, using the most privileged type of user in the system, and they're simply called super users. Uh, if you look at forums and documentation, you might also see this, this term uh, called a host user as well. A super user is simply the most privileged user that can access the system. Uh, they're able to do anything and everything from content to configuration. However, their primary responsibility is not content. It is to apply configuration and, and extensions to the site. So they'll be able to install features and they'll be able to create new websites. And so that's their primary responsibilities. An administrator, oh, and by the way, a super user, that, that would be applied to if you had a multi-tenant site, if you're running 50 or more sites off of a single instance, for example, they would have access to all of them. Now, an administrator would only have an ac ac access to their own website. And so they would be able to do all the content management that they need to do on their own site. That would include you know, approving and managing users and, and security roles, creating pages and, and modules and so on. Uh, but they would not be able to install anything and they would not be able to create a new site. And they also, for that matter, would not be able to even know that the other sites existed necessarily. You know, if you told them, they would know, but other than that, they wouldn't even know. And then finally, we have users. So a user is anybody that just can see the site. Uh, and what they can and can't do is dictated by your administrators. Your administrators has full reign over what type of security roles that they have and who they apply them to. And so an administrator defines what a user can and can't see and what they can and can't edit. Now, uh, oh, yeah, one last thing here. So uh, the web application framework is the other side of that solution. So this is the part for developers and designers. And so I'm going to start at the bottom here. Uh, so the blue box is down here below. Uh, it's pretty much dictates to you that we work off of a, a provider model. And so a provider model allows you to very quickly and easily change functionality under the covers. Uh, so a great example of that is authentication. We come with a couple different types of authentication out of the box. The standard forms authentication that you're already using across pretty much every website out there. And then also Active Directory. So you can connect .NET Nuke uh, to your Active Directory instances out there. Now, you can add both of those. You can add more. You can create your own. And that would not affect the entire site, except for people can, at that point, log in using these different providers. Another great example of that is the HTML editor. It's kind of in the center there, in that, that second row, the top row. The default HTML editor in .NET Nuke is known as the RAD editor. But if for some reason you wanted to use another one, or you built one yourself and you wanted to use that, um, you can do that, and it's very easy. You just uh, install it and change the configuration to point to that new one, and every single view on the site would, from that point forward, use that new HTML editor. 
you would not have to go through the site and update all the hundreds of different views that use it. So it's very easy to uh, make those changes. Now, I'm going to jump to extensions. That's at the top. Remember, an extension is anything that uh, provides functionality to .NET Nuke. So every single extension in .NET Nuke is nothing more than just a user control. And so if you're familiar with .NET development, the user control is pretty much the simplest visual element you can create in the .NET framework. And those user controls can be based off of any type of language that's .NET compliant. So uh, in most cases, it can be either VB or C Sharp. And you can build in either. Uh, every single one of these uh, extensions, they can have the ability to uh, create uh, you know, these different views using CSS, HTML, jQuery, Silverlight, uh, you know, anything that you can typically do in a static website, you can apply here as well. There are no limitations in the system for you. Now, something else that these extensions can use is something called the Telerik RAD Control Suite. Um, you, as a customer of Professional Edition, would have an unlimited number of developer licenses to build your .NET, uh, .NET Nuke solutions using these Telerik controls. And if you're not familiar with these controls, these are pretty much uh, universally accepted as the, as the best control suite out there for HP.NET. Now, these two areas are connected by the green box there, and that's our core services or our API. And this is an area where you as a developer or designer, you don't care what the underlying providers are. You would talk to them exactly the same way. So you save a ton of time because this core API has a lot of things built in for it. You can talk to all the different providers, no matter which provider it is um, and who provided it. And you can also have things that are already built for you. You don't have to reinvent the wheel for things like security, syndication, localization, and so on. You just take advantage of it. You just reuse the functionality that's there for you. And that API grows in every release. So a site page, I'm going to talk about pages just briefly. So uh, when you start talking about your structure, your site, it's going to have whatever structure you define. You're going to create whatever pages with names and so on. And every single one of these pages is going to have something called a skin applied to it. If you don't remember, that's simply the design of the site. And your skins, unlike other extensions, they could just be HTML files. They do not need to be user controls. And these are the things that would your designer would uh, create to allow them to change the layout or manage the layout, and they can use any uh, typical design uh, standards that they want. It could be HTML5, XHTML, CSS, uh, div-based design, so on. Uh, it can be anything that they want. Uh, so in there, in that design, they will define different regions on the page where they would allow content to be. And so these regions are things that we call content panes in .NET New. And all that means is that these are areas that your designer defined to you as a, a content administrator to be able to add modules to. And so the, um, if you are familiar with HTML, these different content panes, they're nothing more than just a div or a span or a table cell. And so every single one of these is where somebody that can uh, edit the page, they're allowed to add a module to it. Now, .NET New can look like anything that you want it to. This is what it looks like out of the box, and you're going to see it in just a moment. But you can apply any type of dynamic design that you want. It could be very uh, robust and colorful, like this one. It could be playful, like this one. And it could be uh, a design that works across different platforms. Out of the box, .NET Nuke has mobile support. And especially in the professional and enterprise editions, you have mobile tools at your disposal where you can go ahead and manage the, your, your site and your content and apply it uh, to these different devices and, and optimize it for them. You can also see what our, a couple of our customers have done, including Pier 1 Imports, Coinstar, and the uh, City and County of Denver. And finally, uh, the University of New Orleans. So you can see that the, you can have any type of design that you desire. Now we're going to go ahead and get into the demonstration. Uh, give me a moment as I switch screens here. So I apologize for the delay here. It will just take a moment. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, ask you guys one more time. If you can see my screen, and right now you see the demo site and you see it moving up and down, uh, please use the raise your hand feature in uh, the control panel for GoToWebinar. Excellent, thank you very much. I appreciate your attentiveness. All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, play with .NET Nuke. Uh, this is going to be an interactive demo, to, or not an interactive demo, but this is going to be a demo demonstrating the uh, professional edition features. And uh, what you see here is .NET Nuke out of the box. It uh, comes with a getting started template. So this allows you to uh, see some getting started information, including some deep links to things like our 
our conferences, community, training, manuals, and so on. And, and of course, a, a short video showing you some of the features. Uh, this is a page when you roll out your site, you'll probably delete or you'll hide. Uh, the rest of this template allows you to uh, kind of see what you might use in terms of a, a, uh, an example. Uh, so a lot of sites will use, have a lot of the same pages, such as Home, About Us, Our Services, News and Promotions. And so all these pages will have examples of how you may or may not want to run your website, how you may or may not want to uh, use and reuse the visual elements that are in .NET New. So you can see that uh, there's just some placeholder content here to kind of give you an idea how you can use some of these elements. You don't, you don't have to keep any of these things, but they are there for you to uh, play with and uh, have these examples. Now I'm going to go ahead and log in as that most privileged user, uh, which is uh, known as the super user once again. And when I do, a lot of, and I, when I use the right password, uh, a lot of things will change. So you can see the page reloads, and we can see that there are a lot of things available to me. We can see that, uh, first of all, we have this new thing at the top of the page. When I scroll down, it sticks with me. It's that gray bar up top. This is something we refer to as a control panel. This control panel is your central area for doing the majority of your content management duties. So if we look at it, I'm going to start at the right side here. First of all, we can change the mode that we're looking at in the site. Uh, so you're going to start to see that .NET Nuke is something that's known as an in-context content management system, meaning that you can view the site and you can edit the site and you don't have to have any back office software. You don't have to have any special super secret URL to go to edit things. Uh, you would simply navigate to the page that you want to edit if you're not logged in, go ahead and log in, and then you can go ahead and make your changes. It's very, very easy to do. Now, the rest of this control panel includes things like uh, shortcut tools, uh, so being able to very quickly do uh, some common tasks, such as managing users or security roles. There's also uh, pages, so this is the area where you come to uh, either update the current page or add new pages to your site. You can also export pages, so you can create site or page templates using this area. The modules menu, this allows you to add a module to the page. So very quickly, I can just choose a module, click the add module button, and it's on the page. Uh, the pages and modules menus we're going to come back to in just a few moments. I am going to dive into, though, the host menu. So we have the host menu and admin menu uh, up there as well. And in the host menu, we have quite a few features. Uh, you know, Some of the uh, basic features include things like uh, site management, where I create new websites, extensions, where I go ahead and install new extensions for the site. And then also our professional edition features, so things like managing web form support. How does .NET Nuke work in your web form environment? .NET Nuke fully supports web form configurations. There's also health monitoring. Health monitoring is uh, also known as the HTTP Keep Alive service, so it allows you to be able to have the .NET Nuke service constantly ping your site, and we'll let you know if it's ever down. Application integrity is one of my more favorite features. Uh, it allows you to have .NET Nuke audit, audit its own file system and let you know if anything has, uh, has changed that shouldn't. Uh, so you'll be able to see uh, modified files, deleted files, and things that um, are obviously going to stay the same. Uh, so that's a great tool for your system admins as well. So they can, if they see anything that's uh, kind of out of the ordinary, they can use that information to help them you know, look through their server logs. There's also Search Crawler Admin. .NET Nuke Professional Edition has a comprehensive search crawling tool. Uh, this tool allows you to have your .NET Nuke site and content actually crawl, very much like Google or Bing or Yahoo would crawl your website. And so all you do is, if it's not already added, you just go ahead and add your URL that you want it to start at, and then you can add any more URLs you want to have it crawl as well. So if you have existing web properties that are in other places or using other technologies, they can also be all aggregated into a single search area and have all the search results come to a single area. And so it makes it a lot easier for your end users to search for information and then go ahead and click through on it. So you can have all your web properties connected to your .NET Nuke site. This will not only search and crawl your content, but it will also crawl your documents as well. So pretty much all uh, standard Microsoft documents and PDFs are all included as part of the uh, documents that you can crawl. And so it will index those as well. Uh, this is a solution that's very highly configurable, so there's a lot of ways you can set up your search crawler. 
Uh, the security center is a proactive area where if you wanted to see anything uh, uh, as far as security related, you can go in there and, and get a view on and see what uh, might be on the horizon. But you as a customer, if there are any critical issues, you'll be the first people in the world to know and we'll note, notify you via email uh, and let you know immediately if there's anything critical on the horizon. Uh, user Switcher is a very fun tool. It saves you a ton of time if you're somebody who manages a website. And so what it allows you to do is basically impersonate another user on your platform. Uh, so you click through on there and you go ahead and you just basically, if you wanted to, for example, impersonate Greg Cook, within one click, I can be Greg Cook on the site. So what that allows me to do is troubleshoot the site as if I was Greg. And so if he called in and said, hey, uh, this area that you said was supposed to be available to me, I can't see it. You look through there and, it's, hey, it looks great, Greg. I, I can't see what's wrong here. You can actually go look at it as if you're Greg and see exactly what Greg sees. And so this saves you a ton of time in troubleshooting uh, because otherwise you'd have to recreate his account, try to duplicate his security settings, and try to duplicate his profile, and all those things are, are very error prone. Uh, the center or the middle row there is all about you as a customer. So you do have unlimited technical support. Uh, you have the ability to go into your support tickets, manage your license, and also get very helpful knowledge-based information, software, and documentation as well. Uh, site groups is a very useful feature. The site groups feature allows you to group together multiple sites, and so it allows you to have a single sign-on across those sites. That's very useful if you have multiple websites and you have the same content managers managing the content across those sites. You can group these sites together using site groups, and then they would be able to manage or they would be able to manage all the content across those sites without having to manage multiple user accounts as well. Uh, so they would use the same login across all those sites. A SharePoint connector is only available to our enterprise edition, but that allows you to connect your SharePoint site to your .NET new site. And so you would get the best of both worlds. You'd be able to manage and use uh, SharePoint for all your document management uh, uh, responsibilities like you're already doing, and then selectively you can choose the different views and, and folders that you're already creating to publish to your .NET new site. And so it's a synchronization process that you'd be able to set up and use. And so you'd be able to display those documents as uh, granular as you'd like onto your .NET new site. Now the last part of the control panel I'm going to talk about is just the uh, admin area. So I just went back to the control panel, top, clicked on admin, and it brings me to all the admin menu features. And this allows you to manage your website, manage your users, your security roles, um, and, and various things like Google Analytics, so you have a professional edition of Google Analytics Pro, so you'd be able to not only add Google Analytics to your site very quickly, but also you'd be able to use uh, some more advanced features like advanced segmentation. It's a great feature to get in-depth views in, in, on different people that are coming to your site and track campaigns and things like that. So you can segment out reporting capabilities on users using that feature. Uh, content staging is a enterprise edition feature only. Uh, that allows you to use a um, and have a staging version of your .NET new site and all your content management would happen there. And then you would publish that to your production site. So in that scenario, you wouldn't necessarily have anybody logging in um, for content management features anyway on your production site. There's also a file manager. The file manager across all editions is pretty much the same, but there is a folder provider uh, that works with .NET new. Uh, so this for folder provider not only allows you to uh, use the three standard type of, uh, of folders, but also we can go ahead and manage folder types. And in the Professional and Enterprise Edition, we have some other folder types that are available to you, including some cloud providers like Amazon S3 or Microsoft Azure. So you can host your files uh, on in the cloud and display them in your .NET Nuke site. So that allows you to have a more responsive page load. It allows you to also have a more high availability uh, page load. Um, and if you have a file server in your organization, you can also use the UNC folder provider. Now, the other interesting thing about the file manager is this is your first insight into granular permissions. We can very granularly assign permissions to groups of people on your website. So um, you can not only just tell people they can browse the folder or view the files, but you can also allow them to do some other uh, uh, features or do some other capabilities that uh, they would otherwise not be able to do. And so this is your first insight in that. You would just select your folder and apply permissions as you would like, simply using checkboxes. Now I'm going to go back to the Getting Started page. Or actually, there's, I think, one more thing in the admin menu I need to mention. Uh, in the professional um, edition, you also have full mobile support. So whether we're talking about an emulator, 
Uh, so we have an emulator built into .NET Nuke to allow you to see your website on these different devices. Um, but uh, there's also site redirection management. So you can very quickly and easily determine by the device and capabilities of people that are visiting your site, how do you want to respond to them? Do you want to point them to a different page? Do you want to point them to an entirely different site? And you can target that at an extremely granular level. You can do all mobile devices, all tablets, or target by device capabilities. It's really up to you. And this is all click and uh, you know very click friendly uh, UI. So you just be able to click and choose things. No technical knowledge needed. Now I'm going to go ahead and go to our getting started page. Oh, and by the way, we do have a webinar that specifically targets our uh, our mobile features, and so you can see that on our website. Okay, so on our, on our page here, before I start adding content, I do want to uh, mention a couple of features here. So when I want to edit content, I simply hover over the content I want to edit, and if I have the ability to edit it, you will see that it's highlighted with a gray box. So as an end user, I can see where content begins and where it ends. So if I come down to another area, for example, and I hover over it, I have the, the entire area highlighted to me. So as an end user, there are there's no mistaking what the impact is going to be of the changes I make. And when I hover over that, I also have the Manage menu available to me as well. The Manage menu allows me to manage the content for just that module without affecting all the other modules on the site or on the page even. Uh, so there's a lot of features that are available to me in the Manage menu, whether I'm editing content or administrating the module, so I can go into the module settings or delete it or export or import the content, and I can move it around the page. Now, throughout the control panel, and also the, all the menus and options that you've seen me go through, all of them are contextual. .NET Nuke is very contextual. And so they will respond to, um, to permissions as you assign them. So while right now I can see all of these features, if I'm logged in as somebody else, and you'll see that soon, I will see many uh, or, or very few features potentially. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new page. And so I'm going to go to the control panel to do that. And in here, I'm going to create a new page called Locations. And I have a couple options available to me. So I, I just typed in Locations. Uh, there's a page template I can choose. I have the options right now of either blank or default. And that simply tells .NET Nuke if I have a template to use, how to apply, or what template to apply. The default template will simply add an HTML module page, because quite frankly, that's going to be the module you add to your site nine times out of 10 anyway. Um, and then after that, where in the menu do I want to add this? Do I want to add it after the Getting Started page, or do I want to add it after a different page? And so maybe I want to add it after the News or Promotions. And if you can see that, and if you see, that's the last page in the menu currently. So when I go ahead and add this, it'll show after the News and Promotions page. And then finally, do I want to include it in the menu? That's a simple checkbox whether or not I want to do that. So at this point, all I've done is typed in the word Locations, and I chose a page in this drop-down list, and now I'm clicking Add Page. So I can literally create a page in just a few seconds with no technical expertise whatsoever. Any end user can do this. Anybody in your organization can do what I just did. They just created a web page, and a lot of cool things just happened. Not only did the page get created, but also the breadcrumbs here that are updated with locations. The menu is updated dynamically. It's already there for us to use. And then also, there's a search-friendly and human-friendly URL that's created for them. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and edit this content. Um, first thing you're going to see is that it's, it called it intertidal, and that's simply because .NET Nuke had no idea what to call it yet, and so we can change that very quickly, though, by just going into the, the module menu here and choosing settings, and I can change the title. Now, changing the title is very easy. I simply uh, go ahead and get rid of the text, and I can just give it whatever name I want, uh, just to keep things kind of uh, uh, streamlined here. I'm just going to call it location. Now, before I leave here, I do want to look at permissions real quick. Uh, permissions, this is another look at the granular permissions grid available in Professional Enterprise Edition. In here, I can choose to allow somebody to be able to edit content without giving them the ability to do anything a lot more uh, uh, dangerous than that. So if somebody can edit content, I don't necessarily give them the permission to also delete the module from the page accidentally. That happens. Um, so I can give them the permissions to edit content without giving them full control or any other dangerous capabilities. And I'm going to just go ahead and update. So in here, just to kind of recap, all I've done is change the title. So I type the word, and I click two checkboxes. And I go ahead and update. 
So you can see that the title of the module changed. Very easy. It's now called Locations. And now I can go ahead and edit the content. So I'm going to go back into this menu, and I'm going to edit content. And by the way, we're using the HTML Pro module here. So there's a lot more capabilities, including workflow and versioning, that are, are available in this module. Uh, in here, uh, we do have a WYSIWYG, or what you see is what you get, content editor. So this allows you to have all kinds of great features, including a spell check, a robust table support. Uh, it, it, it recreates XHTML compatible code in the background, so without having to know anything about design, your end users will be creating very site-friendly, search-friendly, and accessibility-friendly um, HTML. You can insert to various types of media, including uh, images and videos and so on. And so every capability that you can possibly want is in this editor. And by the way, it's completely customizable. You can customize the number of toolbars and the number of features in the toolbars uh, through a configuration view that's in the host menu, so it's very easy to do. And you can do that by security role and by page. Now in here, um, I'm I could go ahead and just start typing content, so I can uh, type some content. And if I wanted to, I can highlight the content, I can do control B for bold, or I can highlight other content, use a toolbar option. And so it has all the basic capabilities that you would expect to see out of something like Microsoft Word, for example. But in the interest of time, I am going to go ahead and use the template feature in here. I can create HTML snippets and then just save them in this, in this template manager. And then later, I can come back and reuse them. So for example, I have a location template here. I just click on it. I can get a preview of it. And then I just insert it into the site. So I can very well just bore you by typing in all this information and inserting the image. But here it is. I can save time, a lot of time, by doing that. And you can see in the background, this is a very simple HTML, it's just three paragraphs of text with an image. Now I'm going to go ahead and just save that change. So there we go, we got some content there. And I'm going to just add another module real quick. So I'm going to go back to the control panel, I'm going to add another HTML Pro module to the site, and I'm going to call this one uh, Contact Us. And in here, uh, instead of putting it in the content pane, which is where you see the locations, I'm going to go ahead and click on this, and you can see all the different um, different content panes that are available to me as a content manager. So I can see all these different ones, and these are inherited from the design that your designer created. These are not defined by .NET Nuke. So you can have as many different layouts and content panes as you want, and name them whatever you want, and that's all dependent upon uh, your, your designer. Now, I'm going to choose the right pane, because I intend for this content to be on the right side of the, the other content that's already on the page. So I just click Add Module, and it's added to the page. Now, uh, if you didn't know what happened, it looks like it's on, not on the right side. So, oh no, you know, this didn't happen the way I wanted it to. So we're going to use the control panel real quick. And in the control panel, I'm going to go to layout mode. Right now we're in edit mode. I'm just going to go to layout mode. And in layout mode, you can see what the designer gave to you. So that's one of the two major benefits here. Uh, you can see what your designer uh, created in terms of a layout and a design where you can add content throughout the page. So you can see that the right pane is not actually on the right side of content. Uh, the content pane. So it's very easy. This view also uh, gets rid of all the content that leaves the module, so it makes it extremely easy to just go ahead and move a module to another section on the page. Uh, and by the way, it does support drag and drop to move these models from, from content pane to content pane. Now I'm going to just go back to edit view, and you can see, there we go, we have the, the exact view that I wanted to have. And I'm going to go to the contact us module just to fill it out. I'm going to edit the content here as well. And in this case, I'm going to also use uh, the uh, template manager to go ahead and insert some predefined content. And in this case, it's going to be some fictional contact information. And so there we go. It's just, once again, three paragraphs of text. I just save it. And now the page looks like it's coming together. And so one of the things about this page that uh, uh, might be standing out is it has these messages that says visible by administrators only. Uh, these messages are there because I created a top-level menu item and .NET Nuke had no idea what permissions to inherit from. Uh, so by default, um, they will have the permissions of the current user that created the page. Now I'm going to go ahead and change that. I'm going to go to the control panel. I can go to page settings. And in page settings, I'm going to once again be able to uh, manage the different settings, including page metadata, but also permissions, so more granular permissions. And so you can see from the file system to the module to the page, Using the granular permissions that are only available in Professional and Enterprise Edition, you can target and uh, capabilities for very specific people. So you can get as granular as you want over who can see what and who can edit what. 
And so I'm going to just make this page visible to all users. Maybe it's ready for the world to see it and just update the page and those messages are gone. So now we have a page. We create a new page in just minutes. Now the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, show you workflow, content workflow in .NET Nuke. Now, um, in order to enable workflow, I simply go to the uh, settings for any HTML module and open that up. And you can see .NET Nuke 6, it loves to save you time. And remember, the last thing I did was, was edit permissions, so it came there. But we're going to go to HTML module settings. And in here, we have a couple things that we can manage, including the number of versions to save in history. By default, it's five. But once again, we have no limits, so you can change that number to anything you want, including unlimited. Right below there is where we manage workflows. So you can see we have a couple of workflows already in there. And I already have a marketing workflow in there too. That's not actually built in. Uh, so I'm going to create a new one uh, very similar to it. If I were to select it, you can see that it has a, a different uh, type of workflow there. But we're going to go ahead and click Manage Workflows to create a new one. And when we're there, we can edit any existing workflow or we can add a new workflow. I'm going to create a new workflow and I'm going to call this one Marketing Approval 2. And I'm going to say marketing must approve all content changes before people can see them. So the description is not required, uh, but I put it in there to kind of give more context of this. Because just like in your, your own environment, you may end up with kind of uh, an ambiguous naming of different workflows. So it's great to have a description to distinguish the purpose behind them. And I just click update, and then I've already created a workflow. This workflow is known as an indirect published workflow, but it is a workflow. Um, for your purposes, though, you probably want at least one state of review. So I'm going to click Add New State, and that's going to allow me to define a group of people to be able to review content before it's published. And so I'm going to call this Marketing Review, the correct spelling. There we go. And I'm going to allow marketing managers to review the content. If you remember in this very same module, and I went into the module settings earlier, I allowed both marketing department and marketing managers to be able to review the content. And in this case, marketing managers, or to edit the content rather. And in this case, I'm going to allow marketing managers only to be able to review and approve the content. Now, in addition to being able to do that, I do have the option to allow them to be notified via email that uh, content is ready for them to review. Uh, but they can be notified two different ways that um, content is ready for them. So I'm going to just click Update to save that. And you can see that I've added a state of review. If I had multiple uh, stakeholders that needed to review content before it's published, I can continue adding new states as I see fit. And once again, there's no limits there. And once I add at least two, I'm going to start to be able to build a hierarchy as well. So I can decide and change my mind even on what order these, these uh, different uh, states of review happen. And uh, that's something you can change at any time. Now I'm going to just click Cancel to go back to the previous page. And now I have another state of review, or another uh, workflow I can use. We have the marketing approval, but we just created marketing approval too. And we can see it has the description I just created. And so now we can use this. Now just below there, we do have some options to change how the workflow can be uh, overridden, and also how I want to apply this current workflow to the site. Do I want to apply it to just this module, or to all the modules on this page, or to the entire site? It's really up to you. But I'm going to leave everything else at the default and just click Update. And at this point, workflow will be applied and enabled for, the, the, for this module. Uh, so I'm still logged in as a super user. I'm going to go ahead and log out and log back in as a standard business user. I'm going to log in as Ross Baker. He's just a, a regular old person in, in the uh, marketing department. He doesn't have any management responsibilities, but he, do have the re he does have the responsibility of managing some content on the site. Now, when I log back into this page, you can see that a couple things have changed. I do have the control panel, but almost all of the features are not available to me. And when I go to other pages, I don't have the control panel at all. In fact, I can't edit anything anywhere else, um, except for here because I did this in a previous demo. But on the locations page, I can only edit one thing on the entire page, and that's this locations module. I haven't given any, him any abilities to edit the content that can contact us module or pretty much every other page on the site. And when I go to the contact uh, or the locations module, I have only a couple options available to me. And that's because I've gotten very granular on the type of permissions I've allowed him to have. 
Now, we're going to say Ross Baker was challenged or told to edit some content, and so we're going to do that real quick. Uh, so I'm going to choose Edit Content in the menu like you saw me do earlier. And in here, uh, I have some things I've changed. First of all, we have some new workflow information that's telling me what workflow it's in and what current state it's in. And then when I come down here, I can go ahead and add information So or edit content. I'm going to go ahead and add a line break here and insert a new image. Now, you didn't see me give any permissions to anybody in the uh, file manager, so I can't upload any images, but I can choose one that's available to me. And whenever I insert images, I do have the capability also to edit any of the attributes of it, uh, including um, some SEO-friendly and accessibility-friendly uh, settings. But I'm just going to insert it, and there we go. Our content is there, and now I can go down and choose to save it. But I do now have two options available to me. If I wanted to save it as a draft, I would simply lock content. But if I'm ready to kick this into workflow and allow people to approve it, I publish changes. Now, now that I've done that, it also did lock the content, and so people can't come up behind me and edit these changes. Now I'm going to go ahead and just save it. And every step of workflow, when I, whenever I pro progress or go backwards in workflow, I do have the ability to add comments. So I can uh, apply feedback. So I'm going to say, added the image as requested. And go ahead and add comment. Now when I do that, at this point, a couple things happen. Uh, this, this state of review is changed into uh, uh, kind of a locked status and it's moved into the next state. Um, also, if you had uh, chosen to do so, the people in the next state of review have been, uh, their emails are being, uh, uh, they're being emailed right now with information telling them that there's content pending for them and a link directly to that content. So the page reloads, you can see my content's already there though, so, but that doesn't mean that it's live. I can edit the content in the module so I can see how these changes are affecting the other content on the page. So once again, context. Now if I go ahead and view the, uh, go to view mode in the control panel, I can see exactly what other people can see if they don't have edit content permissions. And I can further demonstrate that if I were to log out, that content is only visible to content editors. You can see that image is no longer there. Now I'm going to log in as his supervisor, Ms. Janet Smith. And when I log in as her, I have a very similar view. I log in as her, and I can see that I have the ability to uh, uh, edit this module just like he does. So I want to hover over it. I have some options. But I also have new options because I'm part of the workflow review process. I can now approve or reject this content on the fly, or I can go to edit content first and see what the content is, maybe look at the HTML uh, or what have you. And if I go to other pages in the site, I won't have any capabilities except for, once again, that one page where uh, I did already edit something beforehand. And so I have the same capabilities here because I applied the same workflow. Now, under the locations, uh, if I said that this, this uh, content is ready to go, I can go ahead and choose to approve it. Now, whether or not I approve or reject the content, once again, I'll be able to give feedback. But if I approve this content, it'll go to the next state of review all the way until it's published. So it'll go that direction. If I choose to reject this content change, it'll go backwards in the uh, workflow all the way until it gets back to the original author. And, but we're going to go ahead and just approve the content real quick, and we're going to say, uh, looks great, and then add the comment. And so now this content is approved, and if we go to view mode, we can further demonstrate that it is actually there. And so that's content workflow in a nutshell. Uh, one, one thing I do want to show you real quick in content, um, in the, the content workflow is the history of it. So if we go back into edit content for this content, uh, we can go ahead and go to version tracking tab, and we can see all the history of things that have been happening with this content. We can see all the comments, uh, who did things, and then also the uh, version tracking. So we can go ahead and roll back to previous versions. We can preview them. Or if a previous version is, is not any good, we can delete it to prevent it from ever being rolled back to. Uh, so you have a lot of options here. Now we're going to go ahead and turn this over into the questions. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and start looking at the control panel, looking at the questions. So give us, oh, actually, there's one more thing. We have to go back to the slide deck. I apologize. So here's our slide deck. Uh, so some of the things we couldn't get to, uh, some other features, including uh, the document library. So we do have document management. We have a commerce solution for you. Uh, I mentioned most of these other things. And uh, there's high performance caching. not able to show you that. 
So benefit summary, .NET Nuke, hopefully we've demonstrated it is very easy for you to use. Uh, it's very fast, high quality, so it ensures that not only through content workflow, but throughout uh, almost all the features, that you can have a high quality output to your visitors. Uh, very low cost, but high ROI because of that, and things like our, our training program, our marketplace, and so on. Uh, it comes in three flavors, professional edition, uh, that's uh, um, what this demonstration is all about. So it is a fully paid commercial solution. Uh, we, uh, we back it, and we, there's unlimited online support from .NET Nuke. It includes things like the granted permissions, workflow, and so on that you've seen today. There's also the Enterprise Edition, which includes uh, all the things of Professional Edition, as well as Enterprise support for uh, content staging and the SharePoint connector. Uh, there's some additional services that we have as well, uh, whether we're talking about elite support, so an enhanced support experience, developer support services, that's more of a consultative uh, approach of being able to have a developer uh, schedule time with uh, actual senior engineers in .NET New Corporation to talk over not just development, but anything that doesn't necessarily fall into actual support. So, you know, you need to, if you want to talk about uh, configuration or roadmaps or, or anything that, at all, uh, you can talk to developer support. And then there's also comprehensive training uh, featuring uh, Chris Hammond. He's a, a well-regarded uh, uh, author of .NET Nuke as well as uh, the original um, trainer of .NET Nuke uh, over time. So as soon as the project came out, he started offering training programs. And we're very pleased to be able to say that he's uh, heading up our training program. Uh, so, you know, which edition is right for you? There's a lot of features. Um, and, uh, you know, so you, just, uh, you need to just match up what your needs are. A professional edition is obviously the best value, uh, so you get the best bang for your buck, and you'll be able to use uh, all the features that you've seen today. Uh, so we're going to go ahead now and get to the questions and answers. Uh, so uh, first question. You want me to go through it? Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's see here. Just scrolling through these questions real quick. I'm going to get the first one soon. All right. <clears throat> All right. So can each website run under its own application pool in IIS? Uh, so that's a, a great question. Uh, if you use the multi-tenancy feature in .NET NUC, uh, they cannot run in their own application pool. But if you wanted to provide them in their own installations, they absolutely can. Uh, so uh, that's the answer to that question. And I unfortunately lost my spot. spot. There we go. Uh, can't mark that as answered. All right, um, let's see. If the enterprise edition or enterprise version is purchased and a product and development environment is used, do we need a license for product and development uh, for testing only uh, for those sites? Uh, the enterprise or professional edition does come with an unlimited number of development licenses for you to use in your organization. So. If you have 10 developers, you'd use uh, 10 developer licenses that are complementary. Uh, if you have more than that, then you obviously will have more than that. Does each node in a web form require a separate license? Uh, .NET Nuke is licensed on an instance basis. Uh, so that's uh, an application installation in IIS. And so every application instance in IIS does require uh, a, per, a professional or enterprise edition license. Uh, so that's, that's for production. Uh, usage. So does site groups work only within a single instance of .NET Nuke or across multiple instances on different uh, 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 installations of .NET Nuke? Uh, so that's a great question. A uh, site groups does, uh, that particular feature does require that it, those other instances that you have single sign-on to are part of the same site, so the same installation of .NET Nuke. Um, it, it has no visibility or security across uh, multiple installations. <clears throat> oh, okay, this is also a great one. Uh, so, uh, can I edit the CSS inline and see results as I go, or must I do that offline? Um, if we're talking about the content that you're editing, you can definitely edit CSS there. But if you're talking about the design, which I suspect you are, uh, you can uh, edit the skin files uh, and upload them if you'd like. Uh, or you know, continue to install them like you would any other extension. And then there's also the ability for you to override uh, design. <coughs> pardon me, override design in your site via the site settings. So if you needed to apply a quick CSS change, you can do that in the site settings feature of the admin menu. Ooh. is the folder provider all or nothing, or can you assign different providers 
for different folders. You can have as many different providers as you want, and uh, they, it's not all or nothing. It could, it's, it's absolutely selective. So if you wanted to have just one folder that pointed to a cloud provider, for example, that's, that's what you would do. If you uh, wanted to have all the uh, different folders pointing to other locations, you can do that as well. For site groups, can users be assigned only to specific sites within the installation, or are users who are added to that able to log in to all sites at that point? Um, that depends on the groups that you group together. If you have several different groups of types of sites and, and content managers, you would create that number of groups and they would only have access to sign in on the sites that they are assigned to. Uh, how do lists work? Uh, so uh, this person is talking about lists of information. Uh, so there's many different ways to create a list in .NET Nuke. Uh, it's not the same concept as, as you're used to. Um, so depending on the type of list that you're talking about, you'd have a module for that. So for example, a list of articles would be an, an articles module of some kind, blogs would be a blog article of some kind. <coughs> Excuse me. And there are some more generic list type modules, for example, like the form and list module. Uh, you can create the different different types of lists there as well. So um, you're going to find in .NET Nuke it's extremely flexible, and so you can have as many different uh, uh, types of content as you want, and whether you create them or you use them from the ecosystem. So with the review status, um, I believe this is about workflow. Uh, does every manager have to approve, or just one? Is that a configuration setting? Uh, so what you just saw me do is uh, every uh, just a single person in that state of review has to review it uh, and approve it or deny it. And that, that's applied for every uh, state of review that we're talking about. Uh, so not everybody in that group has to approve it. Uh, so there's a question here about applying workflow. Um, can it be automatically applied uh, to each to each uh, child page? <clears throat> Excuse me. Or do I have to uh, assign it individually to every page um, with the workflow? Uh, so there's uh, depending on your site, uh, you would apply that in a couple different ways. Um, so uh, you know you can't select the pages that it's applied to from that UI uh, that you just saw me use, but you can uh, depending on the size of your site. There's multiple ways to do that. Uh, so um, you know one of the ways I would do it is maybe apply it to the entire site and just remove it from specific pages. Or uh, in your case, if it's just for a uh, collective pages in a, in a different area, it's uh, pretty easy to go ahead and um, uh, change that, but it is a little bit tedious. So will the community version support UNC links? Um, so the folder provider that you saw me use, so you saw me show the Windows Azure, and, and this will be the last question, by the way, Windows Azure and uh, the Amazon S3 um, folder providers. Uh, and the UNC one was there as well. That folder provider that that works on is also available in the uh, community edition, but the actual providers themselves are not. Uh, but there are third-party folder providers that you can purchase and install into your own site. Uh, you would just go to store.netnuke.com and you can search for them there. And then just, um, that's a way for your community edition to be able to support those type of features. And uh, there are a lot more questions, but unfortunately, we don't have the time to get to them. So I'll be uh, replying to you personally via email. Uh, and uh, that's the end of the webinar today. I want to thank you very much for attending. Uh, and thank you for your attentiveness and, and all these questions. There are quite a few in here. And uh, um, so I appreciate your time. And I hope it was of value to you. And um, uh, so enjoy the rest of your day, evening, or morning. And uh, thank you again, once again, for, for attending.